Tim and this is Tim BSC and uh, this may end up being one of the most challenging videos to make and uh, kind of get right to try to tell this story because uh, it was one of the most challenging jobs I've had since I've been down here um, so I wanted to kind of uh, take care of a few things I keep getting a couple guys that's usually people that are newer to the channel that uh, often are very uh, eager to share advice and wanting me to do hey why don't you use a drone and hey why don't you do this and you should really uh, add some music or do this or do that or whatever and hey you know what I, I'm not one that uh, has a problem taking advice and hearing uh, uh, people uh, critique my work um, that's something that I, I enjoy um, but I have to remind those that aren't fully on board that uh, my job is not a YouTube creator. My job is the captain of a tugboat and the safety of my crew and the uh, vessel and the environment are all way ahead of making videos for you guys. This is kind of a hobby and uh, I do it at the pleasure of my employer. Uh, and so uh, a lot of people want to see things on the barge. I've talked about that a bunch of times that I can't really show that mainly because of the uh, intrinsically safe or having the cameras that I have are not, although I believe they are intrinsically safe, they're not certified. And so if they're not certified, we can't shoot anything on the barge. Then there's some other reasons to do with uh, security and stuff like that that we can't really do, shoot stuff on the barge. But anyway, um, there have been some people that say, boy, you know, I really wish you'd show some stuff on the chart and give us a better idea of what you're doing. And you know what, um, I can't always do that. Uh, I'm pressed for time, there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing. But today I will. So here we are. I'm taking a little break of showing you uh, the beginning of this video. So let's see how this goes. So here's a chart of the island of Puerto Rico. And we usually load over here. And we come to different ports around here. Around here. This is San Juan. Many, many of you are familiar with San Juan. But the one that we're going to today in this video is over here at Arecibo. So this is... Uh, the Caribbean and the Caribbean swell is all coming this way and going across most of the wind goes all this way and there's really nothing to break up any of that swell that just continues to roll that way so let me uh, bring you to the next chart all right so here's a tighter chart of the North Shore of Puerto Rico if you look over here very tight here there's a little alcove called uh, Arecibo and uh, it's interesting, it gets, it's very deep out here and there's not really much of anything. And remember, everything, the swell and the wind are all going this way, like this. And uh, we basically have to tow right in here into this little teeny thing right here and get right up onto the beach and go right around and flop right around on it. And uh, this is something that I had talked to the other tech captains that had done this before. And of course we did it with, they actually give us two pilots, one pilot on the barge and one pilot on uh, with me. And uh, it's a it's a very uh, it's a very it's a time full of a lot of apprehension. Um, it's, you have to really be on top of your game. We've only had to do it once so far, meaning my crew has, or at least I have anyway. And uh, to be a hundred percent and completely honest with you, it didn't go nearly as well as I had hoped it would. Uh, things. Uh, there was a lot of miscommunication with the pilots, and that wasn't really a language barrier. Um, I think it might be more of a, what they're used to versus what we're used to. And so we'll talk about all that, but I just wanted to show you on the chart where we are. So hopefully you like the video. So here we are. we are uh, got the barge behind us and we're headed in. You can kind of see that uh, Caribbean swell. Bear in mind that I'm about 60 or 70 feet above the water right here. Or the camera is at any rate. Now we're this is just a little bit closer here. You can see we're starting to head, head less south and more east now as I'm coming around. The 
entrance buoys over there on the left. And uh, this is really tough. Because of that swell, I can't shorten up on the wire too much. I've said in other videos that it's a constant balancing act. So what I have right here is I have a pilot on the barge, and he's working with a assist tug that is in the notch of the barge, trying to slow the barge down. And I have a pilot in the wheelhouse with Luke, my mate, and I'm back in the doghouse trying to what we call suck up as much wire as I can. And that's not as simple as just running the winch and pulling it on. As you can see, even coming in here, there's still a good heave on. And uh, when that wire comes tight, it can do all kinds of damage when the barge is heaving one way and the tug's heaving the other. Incidentally, if you look up right now, you'll see there's a sailboat off there in the distance. The pilots had told me when they came in that that guy was anchored right in the middle of the harbor, right in the middle of the channel. And uh, they told him to move, and uh, you'll see we kind of almost get tangled up with him later on. But anyway, we're coming, and uh, right now, in a perfect scenario, I'd be uh, trying not to pull on the wire at all because I need to get this thing slowed down. As you'll see, we start where we start really running into trouble is that the barge, you can see the barge is still rolling around pretty pretty well. And the barge, not having a full load on it, but it's still pretty loaded up, it's wanting to go towards those, that red side. See those buoys over there? It, it, it wants to go that way. And uh, we need it to come to the green side over on the, uh, you know, to the right of the screen here. So I can't just start steering over that way because I'm going to run out of distance, you know, run out of... So you can see... I'm, now I can hear the pilots getting nervous that the barge is not breaking, what we call breaking around. So right here I come into the wire, I get the wire tight, and I really kind of give it some power to really try to snap that barge around. And I'm putting a lot more, I'm putting a lot more strain on the wire and the gear and everything than I really want to. But the alternative at this point is for the barge to continue its course. The assist tug that was backing wasn't able to slow it down or had any directional control on it whatsoever so the only thing I could do is really give it a good shot and try to get it over there to keep it from going around because there's literally no water on the other side of those buoys and apparently there's some rocks over there too so while I'm trying to slow down and as you can see this is looking ahead now running out of space all the time uh, I have to keep putting the power on get that barge to break around. Obviously less than ideal and uh, certainly something that uh, has changed my game plan for the future. I uh, see there's that red buoy that had I not really jumped on that, that thing would have been, that barge would have taken that buoy on the other side of the barge. It would have probably come to an abrupt stop and out of water. But the problem now is that we're doing probably four or five knots faster than we than we really want to be going and we're running out of real estate really quickly and another problem is starting to develop and that's that in my haste to get this thing to be pulled over when the barge finally does come over it continues to start going over to the right side of the screen now our original plan was to come in here and have it be on the left side of the screen have us flop on our port side so we'd go port to port heads and tails on the barge and then spin the barge around and uh, get to the dock but now you can see that this dock is coming in there and if I don't do something quickly that barge is going to swing right over and crash into the dock and it doesn't look like it's moving that fast and it's not but because of the you know 10 tons of cargo on there um, there's a lot of energy that's still in that barge and unfortunately the assist tug we had wasn't able to really stop it so now I have to do the exact opposite I have to get out and start pulling the barge off the dock and remember I'm running out of real estate I'm gonna be up on the beach here at any minute if I don't but I, I only have a split second to get this thing to work so you can see the barge is taken off that way and I'm trying to nudge it over this way you can see the assist tug over there is he's pulling to try to lift the stern off but by doing that that's driving the bow in <laughs> now the good part for me was that I was in the doghouse and I was doing everything I could to protect the barge but my poor mate <laughs> and the pilot they were up there 
<laughs> Luke comes back to me. He's like, Tim, we're almost on the beach. <laughs> so I had to be, uh, it's like, okay, okay, okay. I got it settled down now. So at this point, I know that it's not going to crash into the dock. The problem is I also know that I don't have enough space to get on the other side and switch it around and have, the, have it be bow out like we wanted to. So this is where we kind of had a little miscommunication with the pilots. And it was the pilots were talking on one channel and they were really dealing with the assist tug. And Luke and I were really doing our thing. And at this point, Luke, I'm like, Luke, can we put this thing in bow first? Because I can flop on this. Because my... My idea was that if that assist tug couldn't stop the barge, I could flop heads and tail and I could stop it before we'd run aground on the beach. You can see the beach is just coming into frame now. And uh, so that's where I'm, I'm getting over here. I'm doing this more as a preemptive strike so that if the, if the assist tug can't get that barge stopped, I will be able to stop it. Um, and then I was like, why don't we just put it in? It looks like we have plenty of room here. We can put it in just like this, drive it to the dock. Not only will it, we can rack this one up as a nice save, but a nice job. We can run it right over to the dock and everything will be fine. And Luke was like, yep, I guess that's what we're going to have to do. So that sounded like a really good plan. So that's where we were going. And uh, as we were doing that, I'm, I don't think it was the pilots. I think it was the peak because I think the pilots were, they too were uh, a little wigged out. And uh, it was kind of sketchy, you know, and... Uh, so everyone was so happy that everything turned out well and we were able to calm things down that I think the pilots too wanted... You can see all the different... all the mud and the sand and the water there from, the, from us stirring everything up. But uh, anyway, I think the pilots too were thinking that, yeah, we just put this thing to the dock and we'll call it a day. But the people in the dock said, no, you have to turn it around. So now you can see I'm up against the barge here, but I'm on the wrong side of the barge now. So... <laughs> <laughs> where we thought we were like, oh, phew, okay, we saved the day, now we can put this thing over, and well, guess what, now we got another problem, now I gotta back up and get around, get around on the other side of this thing, and uh, so I guess that's what we'll start to do now. Incidentally, there's plenty of water here, um, when you see me kicking up that sand and that, the, the mud there, that doesn't really hurt us, we still have water underneath the barge and underneath the tug, the tug's drawn 14 to 16 feet right now, and uh, that's probably, I don't know what the barge is, the barge, like I say, it wasn't a full load that we brought in there, but anyway, um, that just happens because it stir, there's a lot of water that's moving and it stirs everything up. The problem is, is that you, things, things get really squirrely when you start running low on water. And what, I don't mean that you're a ground or anything, I'm just saying that the, the hydraulic actions of the, the, the way things move, it, it just gets weird. Anyone that's done a lot of dredging work um, will tell you, yeah, we're going to be running aground pretty soon. And they'll usually know when they still have four or five feet of water under their keel because of the way the boat handles and the way it feels, you can things get squirrely and you can start figuring that out. Okay, so, so now I'm backing around. Now here's a problem. I've said in many other videos how I always worry about getting the wire in the wheel. And getting the wire in the wheel is hard to do with a quart nozzle boat, and I've said that a million times. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's all presuming the wire hangs straight down. But right here, the wire is on the bottom. And so that means the wire gets pinched and pokes up and pushes in different directions, which all would help to assist getting it in the, in the wheel. Now, I also have another problem, and that's that there is a rubber fender that goes around the whole boat, and especially around the stern. And unfortunately, the wire right now is stuck on that fender. And uh, I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm figuring that that's probably what's happening, but uh, I would love that wire to snap up around the stern right now, and then I'd be able to use both engines like I'd want to because I know where the wire is. But because I, I see it going right over the Texas bar and then on the starboard side, I have to be very careful of what I'm doing. Remember that the tugboat is about 110 feet, 105 feet, something like that, from stem to stern. So there we go. You can see me spinning around here. And there isn't that much room between me and the barge, uh, between the barge and the dock. So I, I can't just, like, drive over there. I have to get over and get lined up and get more uh, parallel with the barge to sneak in that hole. 
So now we're coming over there. And here's an effect you can see where the water against the boat is clean, but the water is muddy that's coming up around the dock. And that's, once again, a, a product of the wheel wash blowing up against the hard dock and then rolling all the, the set, silt and sediment up over the top of the water. Not a big deal, but if you're wondering why that's happening. So now, now I have to get over there, and I'm, I'm fighting two things. The barge is slowly sliding over towards the dock. That's the way it wanted to go before, and it seems like it wants to go that way anyway. But I also still have that wire stuck on that rubber back there. And uh, remember that we have a couple tons of force between the chains going to the fish plate, the fish plate, and all the wire, and the thimble and shackle and all that. So it's not like somebody can reach over there and do that. So uh, I have to keep working with that. So one of the things I do to do that is to move as far ahead as I can to get the angle to kind of pull, pull it out of that the little rubber fender there. Uh, the boy's up there on the get me a bow line. So our idea here is that once we uh, get made up alongside here, We'll have that assist tug push the bow around and we'll come around and uh, we'll put the barge 180 degrees around. Okay, so I, right here I do a little bit of fast forwarding. You know, some people, it's always always something we debate about in the, <laughs> in the comments, but uh, anyway, that's what we're doing right here. Now, it's kind of interesting. This person who had uh, originally anchored right in the middle of the channel right off the dock, who the pilots told move, um, they saw us move, maneuvering and uh, saw us coming around here. And instead of uh, starting up their boat or doing whatever they had to do to get out of the way, no, they thought it would be better just to film us. I think they were uh, looking for us to uh, buy them a new boat if we ran them over. But luckily, we did not do that. I guess we could say that. We did not do that. We did, we did not run them over, and we did not uh, have to buy them a new boat. But like I say, sometimes it's interesting that, and you know, it wouldn't have been that hard. Whoever's out there has a bunch of scope on their y, on their anchor, and you would have thought that, if, I mean, if it was me, if it was my boat, and I saw something like that coming, um, I'd probably just drive ahead on the anchor, <laughs> you know, Um but they were just going to let us run them over, and uh, well, it is what it is. So now we get it uh, parallel, and uh, now it's just a matter of uh, walking the barge over there. I say walking it over, that's not exactly right. Um, but we're going to be moving, para you know, uh, we're going to be sliding the barge up to the dock and getting it in position the whole time. It would be nice if I could walk this a loaded barge like this over there, but uh, we don't have uh, <laughs> the, phys the physics and geometry are not there to allow that to happen. But that's why we have an assist hub. Those that have been with me for a while know that I've often said that if you... Uh, want to do well in this industry one of the biggest uh, things you have to work on is your patience and that uh, things go sideways quite often orders change all kinds of things happen and in this case uh, it would have been so nice not to have to flip this barge around but uh, you just kind of have to go with the flow and uh, you know uh, tackle one step at a time it's very easy when you think you know when you look at the chart and realize that you've got a lot of heave coming in a lot of swell and you're concerned that something's wrong is going to happen and uh, if you look at the whole picture it can get really tough but if you just go there nice and easy you can uh, just do one thing at a time and it's not that big a deal I guess uh, maybe a better way of saying it is sometimes some very complex tasks can be done if you just break them down and just do one step at a time and 
it's easy to get overwhelmed by, oh my God, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. You know what? We can't control everything. So just do the best we can at one step, have a good plan in place, and complete one task and move to the next task. Before you know it, you've got the barge spun around and you're putting it in position at the dock and we can all breathe a little bit easier after that. You know, one thing I haven't talked about is uh, it's got to be difficult for the pilots. Um, they haven't worked with me for years. And uh, there are a lot of pilots that I haven't worked with, you know, at all up in the Northeast. But we all kind of do things relatively the same way. So we all kind of know the same lingo and what we're, we all have the same game plan and all that sort of thing. But these guys are, uh, you know, they're literally in a, in a, in a you know, they're Puerto Rico, it's its own country and its own culture. And uh, these guys are really good at what they do. The pilots know the stuff and that's why they, that's why you hire local knowledge. So uh, when I say that uh, I, things didn't go as well as I wanted to, um, it's difficult. It's di it was difficult for me to, to understand exactly what they had in mind, and it, just as I'm sure it was very difficult for them to do it. And, and I guarantee you the next time we do this, that it'll be much smoother because both of us will be a, a much closer to having a, a similar game plan. And we'll probably, you know, before we do anything, we have a little meeting and say, this is what I want to do. I want to do it this way. I want to be at this speed at this place. And we get to the buoy. We want to start doing this and that sort of thing. And so um, this also, because it, where it is, and I, I, I would imagine because of where it is, but uh, it's not one that we do every day. And in fact, I've been working here for a while, but I've only done this job once. And uh, Quite frankly, I'm not really looking forward to doing it again, but it's part of the job, and that's why <laughs> that's why we're here. So I'm sure that we'll be doing it again, and like anything, um, uh, many of you have heard me talk about my old Portuguese captain that taught me everything I knew. He had a whole bunch of really great sayings, but one of those things that it, I certainly a mantra that I've tried to live by is he says, try to identify what scares you the most about running a boat. He goes, and then do it all the time. And before you know it, it, it won't be scary anymore. And it's basic, and you know, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I know that, I know that. Well, you know, we can all say we know that, but it's another thing when you live by that, and it certainly is true. Like I say, this was not a, I had lost a lot of sleep dreaming about this job, thinking about how I'd do it. Probably did it a hundred times in my mind. Like I say, the, the captain I replaced, he and I went over it two or three times. And then uh, before I came in here, he and I did it over the phone together. The captain that uh, is opposite me, he and I had talked about this a whole bunch of times. Um, but there's no, all of that is wonderful. And all of that is help, uh, helpful and there's a place for that. But it's no substitute for actually doing it. So uh, like I say, as unpretty as this was, we didn't do any damage. Nobody got hurt. Everything was fine. Took a little bit longer than I wanted, but uh, I'm quite certain the next time we go in will be much better. Incidentally, if we're handing out extra points, I would hope that you guys give me extra points. This probably was not the job that um, would have been the greatest to share with you as far as... Uh, trying to uh, say how wonderful I am. <laughs> no, no, I'm not trying to say how wonderful I am. I am trying to tell you that I am human like anyone else and that uh, I have uh, things that challenge me and this was definitely one of those jobs. But uh, we got it out and everything was good. So as they, we get into the last few feet of the dock there, just want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for uh, supporting the videos. You can support the videos by giving me a thumbs up. Write a comment. Definitely subscribe if you haven't. That always helps out. And uh, a special big thank you to the patrons. The patrons are people who pay 2 to $5 a month. And uh, they pay for the production of these videos. I incur a lot of uh, data expenses. And the equipment doesn't last too long out here. <laughs> And uh, these are all things that the patrons help out with. So if you want to be part of the crew, 
run on over to uh, patreon.com slash timbc. I'll put a link in the description. And you can click on that if you'd like to. No pressure, but it'd be wonderful if you gave it a thought. Um, hey, while you're there, too, I'll just put a link to my other channel, SV Paquita. Uh, I had sailed that, uh, my sailboat from uh, New England down to Puerto Rico for the winter and did some cruising in Puerto Rico on my off time and then uh, recently left uh, Puerto Rico and went to Florida and then went back to work again and then uh, Chris Alita and I sailed the thing up her first ocean passage where it's just her and me we did 1100 miles offshore all the way up to uh, Watch Hill Rhode Island so uh, those videos aren't out up yet but they're coming pretty soon so hope you hope you like that too so Anyway, you guys take care. Really appreciate you watching. And as always, I'll see you on the one.